Do you ever really wish you could just have all your fantasy clothes exist in real life? Me too! So today on Amiguri's World Building, uh, original fantasy content channel, we're gonna be making fantasy fashion in real life. When bringing your fantasy clothes to life, the number one thing you need to consider is how does this actually work? It's kind of like doing those paper crafts you did when you were kids where you made cubes and you gotta consider how all the pieces will fit together into like a 3D object. Fantasy clothes are like that. Um, so today I'm going to be making this D&D character skirt and maybe this little cloak too. Uh, I was also going to make this kawaii bunny bag that would double as a fua fua plushie, but I ran out of time because, uh, you know, d stuff, things happen. So anyways, I'm not going to be doing that one. Maybe in a future video? Anyways, experienced seamstresses will tell you to start with a pattern, like one of these. They show you all the parts of an outfit or a bag or whatever, and you can get them usually for like 10 to $20. Um, but I am adventurous, and I hate following instructions because I have problems with authority or something. So I'm going to wing it. But you should probably either make a pattern on paper or find a pattern before you just start cutting fabric. Now, if you spend time around here, you could probably already guess that I have an Arliss Air costume. Uh, actually, up until this point, I've always designed my protagonists and D&D characters with clothes I already own in mind. It's one of the main reasons so many of my characters wear wrap clothes, because up until this point, I couldn't be bothered with the money and time to learn how to use a sewing machine. Not to mention, I lived in like a 900 foot apartment, so I didn't really have anywhere to store it. So, um... Anyway, uh, so I just had all these fabric quadrilaterals that I would wrap on myself. But I just got this discounted sewing machine off of eBay for like $100, possibly just for this video, uh, and so I'll be using that. That being said, if you already crochet or embroider or animate things, then you probably have more patience than me, and you could probably sew things by hand. Uh, some people like these sorts of repetitive motions and find them soothing while they watch Netflix or whatever. I, uh, don't. <laughs> Um, some other tools I got that are not sponsored by were this thread. I don't know how much it was, but I got it from a store. This seam ripper for like six dollars. This fabric chalk for like ten bucks. I paid extra for it to be fancy and silver. This sewing kit I got as a gift, and these really nice fabric scissors I scissors I also got as a gift. What's that? You don't know how to sew by hand? The basics are easy. Let me teach you. First, you thread the needle. You stick the needle through the eye of the needle. If you're struggling, you gotta lick the end of the thread to make all the fibers stick together. Then you just pull it through. Step two, you tie off one end of the thread. If it's a big enough thread, you can just tie a knot in it, and then it'll catch on the fabric. But I like to tie an end of it around the fabric I'm working on. This isn't necessarily the best idea, but I like the extra security. Step three, poke the needle through both pieces of fabric that you're trying to fasten to each other. Hi, bunny. My bunny came up to say hi. Then pull it back through the back a little ways away. There is a lot of different types of stitches, but this is the most basic one, and it can be used to connect most things. Continue on until you get to the other end of the fabric that you're trying to fasten together, and tie it off and snip the ends. And that's the most basic sewing info I can give you. If you're somehow dodged learning this your whole life, uh, now you know how to sew. And sewing machines basically just do this, but faster, I think. That being said, I don't have any idea how to use this sewing machine. I mean, I'm kind of just guessing, and I'm sure there's YouTube tutorials if I get stuck. Okay, I did all the stringing things. I don't know if I've done this correctly, though. Um, there are some parts in this guidebook thing that I don't think I have on this machine, so that's a little concerning, but anyways, uh, let's give it a shot. I guess we'll sew uh, something. Okay, I got this random piece of fabric here. It's like a ribbon from a gift basket. I'm gonna fold it like this and I'm just gonna sew it. Maybe. I don't know. We're gonna find out, I guess. Here we go. Oh, haha, <laughs> my machine isn't plugged in. Do I know what's happening? Probably not at all. Oh, this is gonna get caught in here. Oh, hi, Hestra. Yeah, I'm making a mistake. Okay. I got a foot pedal. I'm gonna press. Here we go. Okay, is that doing anything? I don't think it is. I don't think I've done it right. I don't know how to get this out here other than to keep going, though. Oh boy. Oh no. <gasps> oh. 
did ruin this, though. So that's unfortunate. Okay, well. Lesson learned, maybe? Question mark? Okay, everyone. Jam's cleared, we re-threaded. Take two. We're gonna do it on this, this piece of fabric here. Hopefully the angle's a little better this time. We'll turn it inside out so we can make it into a little goofy pillow. It's done. I don't really, I'm not a big fan of these colors. No hate to anyone who is, but it's just not my style. But So uh, it's a good test piece. Also, someone else hand sewed this, so, you know, just continuing the tradition. All right. Here we go. I got my foot on the pedal. Here we go, guys. Eh. Oh. Hang on. So straight. Please. Oh. Straight. Uh. Kinda knotted up right there. Oh my god, guys, it has a stitch. Oh my god, also this is definitely not straight. This is gonna be a thing to learn. New skill that I didn't know that I didn't have. How to sew in a straight line. And also there's like so much gap here, like, I don't know how to handle, I'm not gonna know how to handle that. I don't think I'm gonna, cause the foot's so big. See that that's not oh yeah sure yeah so it's tied off in the end there see now we can turn it inside out good we did it guys that's that's sewing all right so I really liked that uh, I mean it was a little confusing and very scary uh, I was really scary it was gonna jam the whole time. Um, but I basically have figured out how to thread it at this point, and I learned that I should not use, um, really stringy fabric in it that catches in all the machinery, um, and when I get to my actual fantasy outfit, though, this shouldn't be an issue, um, oh, and also, belatedly, I learned that this button over here moves the foot up and down, <laughs> Oh my god, I'm literally not even doing my face in this, I'm just gonna put my VTuber on the screen. By the way, this fabric I'm using, it's just a sheet I thrifted because, like, uh, I, amateur seamstress Amaguri, would like to reduce harm and not buy from the environmentally destructive textile industry uh, while I'm not making, while I'm not good with things. And also, I don't have the money to be sending like $70 on fabric, so I just got this from a thrift shop and I'm gonna dye it the right colors later. Plus, sheets are comfy, so I'm guaranteed to not hate the texture of the fabric on my skin. And if there are durability downsides to this, I'll find out in like three years or whatever. I'm a big fan of non-conventional materials and just using whatever is convenient or around the house, uh, but sometimes it does come back to bite me in the ass. Okay, guys. Guys, so I opened this because I was going to wash the sheets, right? Because I- because- because this- this looks like sheets, right? You- you thought these were sheets too, right? Like, I'm not insane? So I was going to wash them. It's just like fucking quilt batting. There are no sheets! Ugh! I feel so dumb. Crimes. Anyway, I'm gonna cry now. I mean, I have some stuff from it, but I don't know if I'm gonna use this. What the fuck even is this? Is this supposed- is it supposed to be like a pillow then? Is that what this is? Have I misinterpreted this? Oh. Okay, I'm trying to get the thing out. I be making a mess all over my carpet. Look, it looks like something died on here. It's gross. Look at that. I did it. Oh my god, I, I did it. I did it. My lord, it's so dangerous in here. I keep wanting to buy all the cool decor things. Like, look at these lanterns! Oh my gosh. No, oh, I found small things. Look how cute this little thing is. Okay, so I got, I got dye, um, I also bought extra things because of course I did, I got these cute little plants, uh, and also these rock, rock lights for my boyfriend, and he's gonna tell me that he doesn't need them, and he doesn't, 
but uh, it's our anniversary soon. It's like our uh, since 2015. What's since 2015? Eighth anniversary? Yeah, so he deserves some rock lights. Uh, now I'm gonna get some dinner and then I'm gonna go home from this little extravaganza. I still need to get new fabric though. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Okay, so my plan for this skirt is that I am going to just make a simple circle skirt and then attach it to a thick belt waist piece thingy that will just be like a tube and the tube will tie off at one end. Oh, and for the lacing, because I don't have a uh, automatic button maker or like buttonhole sewer, I'm just going to be sewing uh, strips of fabric onto the uh, skirt itself. And that way it, I can just tie the strips together and that'll kind of mimic what it's like in my world, although I will note that this D&D character has access to buttons. By the way, um, did you know in Nova Thulian that a skirt is called an enilla, which is um, Nova Thulian for skirt in my conline. Okay everyone, so listen, listen, here's what's happened. I am, um, I read like halfway through the page of how to do a circle skirt and I was like, oh, I got this. So I, I didn't divide by two and now, and now, um, I don't know how well I can actually show you this. Um, but now it's too big. I cut off too much, but it's okay. Um, because it's all part of the process and I don't know, I'll figure it out. It's fine. Now we're putting the official fabric into the machine. Let's take a quick split break from the sewing vlog to discuss how to dye things. Dyeing fabric is simple, probably. Uh, you just buy dye for the appropriate fabric, it'll say on the dye, and then you stick it on hot water with the fabric, and then you set, let it sit, and then you gently wash out the excess. And then it's the color you want. Uh, so I ended up having to basically fold it in half and then sew it to the thing. I was gonna cut a slit in it anyway, so this works out. Um, but yeah, here we go. As I was working on this, I realized that I'm gonna just need to make this kind of a patchy skirt and like have that be okay with it, have be okay with it being kind of patchy and raggy. And that's okay, so this character's um, this cute little necromancer girl. So it makes sense for her clothes to be a little ragged. Plus she's been uh, traveling a lot, but she's also supposed to be kind of a fashionista. So I don't know if this is exactly working, but hopefully when we dye it purple, it'll at least be her color. Okay, now we put this into the washer. I'm kind of, I'm pretty satisfied with the skirt. Um, it's like got a lot of problems, but it fits me comfortably and it's really soft, which I do, both of these things I do appreciate. And, uh, well, I guess I'm just really satisfied that I made something that like works. And while I couldn't be showing this at fashion shows or like, you know, wearing this out in public or something. Well, I mean, I don't have any problems wearing it out in public because I'm self-confident and my appearance doesn't like I'm not nervous about it, but I would probably only wear this to like a D&D &D game or something or somewhere where I knew people were going to be chill rather than trying to wear it out to like a real like a job interview or something because it's you can see where all the threads and like parts that I didn't quite know how to fit are like being like hastily jammed onto it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm pretty proud because I did it all from scratch and like I'm happy with this design and stuff. I mean, this is about as good as something I could order from like a shady Chinese website and I made it myself with thrifted things so I feel good about that. The purpose of new hobbies isn't necessarily to like immediately be good at them. I mean, I've said this on so many of my other videos at this point, so I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record, but for me, it's the journey and learning how to do things and re like doing it wrong or doing it however I think I want to and learning why, like finding all the gaps in my knowledge. That's cool because now, now when I hear people are like, oh, you should pin things, you should iron things, I like, I understand what they're doing. Like, I'm not just like, that part sounds boring. I'm like, oh, this part is necessary to make, like, the fabric lay correctly, or to make, like, fitted things, and also, and, you know, it just helps me know uh, what corners I can cut and what things I should actually stick to. Anyone who might be, have, like, emotionally struggled to get to the point where I am, like, if you have ADHD and you got, mm, or autism and you got that rejection-sensitive dysphoria or whatever, anxiety, etc., etc., perfectionism, um, I just want to remind you that, like, you know, like I said, it's a journey. You can't start being really good at something. You know, some lucky people, I guess, are naturally born to be really good at things, to just have a natural grasp of how something works. But I find that in general, you end up having to do like all of this learning and practice, and you just gotta be kind to yourself and enjoy the process of getting better at something. And that might not necessarily be something that you're already really good at, but it's a good muscle to stretch. The point is the journey. So anyways, I hope that you liked going on this little sewing adventure with me. It's been kind of hectic of a month here, so I've gotten kind of scrambling these last couple of days to, you know, finish this video up. So I guess I should just accept that all my videos are going to be slightly scuffed. 